Hey, what's going on guys? This is Star Blast Studios coming here with a brand new figure review. And today guys, we're going to be taking a look at the new SH Figure Arts Final Form Cooler. Now, if you guys know, I usually start off my reviews with the figure displayed inside of the box, but I was just so excited for this figure and like this thing was just like so cool. I can't get myself to put this back in the box because as soon as I pick up this figure, I am just messing around with it, which is probably why this figure review took so long. But if we want to do take a quick look at the box here, here the box is from the front. Here it is from the side, you can see other images of him. Here's the back of the box, even more images of Cooler right there displayed and everything like that. And you of course got the accessories in the in the box, which I will have to reopen the box in order to actually show you guys all of the accessories. So without any further ado, let me just go ahead and do that and we will take a better look at this figure. Now I remember when this figure first came out, I was super, super stoked and also super, super disappointed. The reason why I was super stoked is obviously because this is cooler and the way that this figure looks is absolutely amazing. The sculpt work, the detail, like the paint work, it's just, it's, it's absolutely awesome. But the reason why I was disappointed was because this figure is unfortunately a premium Bandai exclusive, which my gosh, I seriously am having so many problems with with Bandai going and making a lot of these really good figures into such exclusives like that and it really is a shame because with it being a premium Bandai exclusive you're not going to be seeing this figure release like at all ever again like you have all of the pre like after this figure releases you won't be getting any more copies of this specific version and that's really just such a shame because this is I think my personal favorite figure in the entire SH Figuarts line right next to Broly. Like, I really mean that. This is absolutely just amazing. There is a few things, though, that we, like, like with any figure, there is a couple of issues that I am having, which we will get into, but seriously, they're, they're really barely anything. I would dare say that this figure is almost the most perfect figure, like, Figure Arts has ever released. I am seriously, I, I seriously mean that with every fiber of my being. This is one of, this is the best figure, I think, Tamashi Nations has ever made so we'll go ahead and get into the details right over here if you look at the actual crown i think we're just going to call this a crown right now you can see that there's a lot of really nice scratches all in the white area you can see scratches even more like on the chest and like these bits right over here which oh these bits are articulated and they, they're engineered really really nicely to where they don't hinder any articulation at all and they move around with the arms and that's just a really cool feature you can see on the actual purple there is some shading going all throughout um go all throughout the arms Right over there, more scratch details and blue on the um, on the form right there. Surprisingly enough, I'm pretty sure... Okay, one of the things I noticed when it comes to the movie villains is that just, like, with Cooler and Broly, they all have, like, these sort of circles on them. Like, you can see, like, like with Broly, he had, like, the circles on the front of his boots and like, he had the stuff on his, on his hands. I can see, like, some sort of inspiration going along uh, with that thing, with that thing. It's just an interesting thing that I... Notice, but obviously it is meant to like reference um, uh, the stuff that we saw in Frieza when he uh, like when when he was transformed and he had he, Frieza had a bunch of those on him too. But we just see a lot more of that here on Cooler when it comes to like those crests, which I think is all meant to exaggerate the properties of his fifth form. Um, you can see a lot more shading going like going on the legs as we as we get uh, lower throughout this figure, more scratch details and um, in the blue right over there. Looking around, on it. there is. I I can't tell if there's any actual shading on the white on the white section over here. It's not a completely white section. It's more of a it's a darker white, which I like because it gives the figure a little bit of a dirtier look. There's not specific shading, but the color choices of the plastic really do help emulate. There really could be shading on it, which I do appreciate on this figure. You can see on the tail, there's not really much shading on there, but honestly, it doesn't really need it. Um, on the feet, not really any shading, but I do really like the sculpt work that we have on there. It is just all in all a really wonderfully sculpted figure, and I really am. I really got to commend Tamashi Nations for their work on this thing. They they really just killed it with this figure overall. Now I haven't particularly done this before in my reviews, but I'm gonna do it right over here for this figure. So to give you an exact height measurement on this cooler, uh, to the top of his head, he looks like he's sitting a little over seven inches tall. To the top of his crown. I think it is just shy of about eight inches in height. Now for some size comparison, let's go ahead and get him standing right next to the Super Saiyan God Goku right over here. And of course, what would, what would be a cooler review if we didn't get out his little brother Frieza? There we, like, there we have him right over there. And for some other size comparisons, if I oh, okay, well, that's one thing that Cooler has over Frieza is that like his gigantic feet lets him actually be able to stand 
really, really well and not have it to where the, the tail that's equipped it to him going to hold him, like, give him any, like, down weight. That's one issue with Frieza that, that I know a lot of people have. You don't have that problem here with Cooler, which I really, really do like. For some other size comparison, here he is standing next to the SH Figuarts hit. And for, just for shits and giggles, here we have the uh, SH Figuarts Merge Zamasu right over here as well. For some taller figures, here he is standing next to the event exclusive colored Nappa, the SH Figuarts Broly, and of course, an Awakening Goku. Now, when it comes to the accessories on this figure, this might be something that actually lets a lot of people down because we don't really get as much accessories on this figure as we would with other figures. But first off, when it comes to the accessories, we do get a pair of fists, which comes on the figure right out of the packaging. We also get a pair of death beam hands for each and every single figure, but they're not exactly uh, like looking straight. They're, they're a little bit more curved. We get a pair of grappling type hands, which is some gripping type of hands. You know how they are when it comes to those hands. And then we also got some open palm blast hands, which... They are a little bit more, they're not quite like as open palm as they would be on other figurines and stuff, but like they do do the job very, very well. If you own the uh, full power Broly figure, the um, from the act from the actual Dragon Ball Super Broly movie, you'll recognize the similar sculpting when it comes to these hands. I think that they're doing a lot of those more often than not with the with the bigger figures. Um, now, when it comes, now here's some really cool accessories that we actually get. We actually get a pair of interchangeable feet, which is something that we got on Frieza, and I really like that we're going to be having it here on Cooler. And that's something that I'll actually show right over here on camera, just so you guys can see. So first off, like uh, for, I'll put this figure on a stand, uh, just to make it this a little bit easier to show you guys as I do it. And so, for when it comes to the feet, uh, let me go ahead and take uh, this part right off right over here. And then, we, um, in order to actually tell which foot is the right foot, there is uh, a little uh, thing in the inside of the hole that specifically says that, uh, let me actually turn on the light, you'll be able to see it a little bit easier, just like that. You can see that there's a little uh, sculpted L in the inside of there so that you know that this is for the left for the left leg, and that is how you can figure that out. So we go ahead and get this on right over here, for like just like that. It might be a little bit difficult for me to specifically do it on camera. I'm sure if you guys have this in hand, it's not going to be too, too difficult. But unfortunately, but that can honestly depend on, you know, your, your copy of this figure. Because unfortunately, one of the things that is very concerning about this figure is that it is made in Vietnam. So, okay, I cannot get this. I'm going to just go ahead and do this, like, like, like off camera real quick. Because this figure is made in Vietnam, not all of the copies, I think, are going to be coming out as good as others. I've seen other people complain about different things regarding this figure. So I'm going to go ahead and just like take this right off right over here. I think the stand actually ended up being a little bit more of a hindrance. We'll just, um, put, I'll just put on the stand like right after I'm done interchanging the feet. Okay, there we go. I was able to get that one on on camera. So we can go ahead and take the stand. And pretty much here you have like a, a cool looking pose of, well, actually you can't even see the full on pose. Um, let me try to get it a little bit better. Um, you can, well, you get the idea. He's not f completely in frame, but he, this is like a good pose you can get with the feet on Cooler to make it look like he's floating up in the air. And it, it, it just, it, here, I'll just move the camera back a little bit so you can see. It looks really, really good. It, it has a whole lot of potential for really fun and dynamic poses once you get this thing posed around. Now for the last and final accessory on Cooler, this is, this is one of my absolute favorite accessories. It is an unmasked head, and this is something that we only saw in this series for just a brief moment as he was transforming uh, and got the mask like right over his face, but it's just a really fun, cool accessory. And the way that you want to interchange it is you want to go ahead and take off the crown piece uh, right over here off of the front like that, and then you want to just like completely take off the face, and then we'll just go ahead and take the other cooler face we put it, that on right there and then just take the crown and throw that on over here as easy as that and as like i said this is only something that we saw for just a brief moment in the actual movie that he was featured in but again it's just a really fun and cool accessory that they even did and i really do like that tamashi nations did that now one thing about the actual faces that maybe would have been cool had they had they done is so some, a feature that we saw them do on the first form Frieza that they recently released earlier this year was in, was introducing like new uh, sculpted heads. And the difference between the two heads that I showed off in Frieza's review, the place where his eyebrow and anatomy would be was actually raised up so that you can have a little bit more of those exaggerated faces. Now, Cooler in his movie did have a few more exaggerated scenes where he saw that Goku was actually 
um, pushing back his supernova with the Kamehameha as he was going towards the sun. And I feel like there would have been a that would have been a cool face for them to introduce if they made like a separate crown a crown piece that would be specific for that specific headpiece that he's included with in order to make it so that you you have that that more of a scared looking uh, impression for Cooler. And, and I think that just would have been really interesting for them to add in for a lot of different poses. But I understand why it's not too big of a deal because at the end of the day. Like, Cooler, when he's masked, wouldn't really show a lot of, like, expression anyway. But that was just something that we saw in the show that I think would have been cool had they actually put into fight, into the figure form. But with that being said, let's go ahead and move on to the articulation. Now, right off the bat, when it comes to this figure, there is one thing that screams the fact that this was made in Vietnam if you've been collecting the figures from the line. And it's just really just one main issue when it comes to this figure. Now, it, it has to do with the double ball peg. You can absolutely hear what is going on in there. The double ball peg that they put in for the head is absolutely way too tight. When you move this thing around in there, it's it just like, oh, it, 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 it sounds like it's going to break, but I don't think it's actually going to break. It's just the fact that, that they put the figure in too tight, and that's just the one issue that I'm mainly having with this figure, oh, like, unfortunately. Everything else is absolutely great, though, when it comes to the articulation. So just so you can get a, get a good look, his head can go this far down, and... It can go this far up. The sound is a little bit scary, but he does not, I promise you, it does not feel it's going to break the sound frequency from my microphone here. It's just going to make it sound a little bit louder than it actually does in person, so I promise you, it's not that bad. But he can look that far up, which is a pretty good distance looking up. I really do like that, and you know, double ball pegs really is something that works a lot better when it comes to figure arts, and it's something that I wish they would do a little bit more often. You can get a little more head tilt out of there because of the fact that it's a double ball peg, which I really do appreciate. But again, you are going to have to go through that squeaky double ball peg um, in there, unfortunately. You can do a little bit of fixing, which I might actually do, but I'm not... But because of the fact that this is a premium Bandai, I don't want to take any unnecessary risks when it comes to this stuff unless I know exactly what I'm doing. Because I have messed up a couple figures before in the past uh, when using WD-40. On there. Now, when it comes to the arms, I've talked about this a little bit earlier, you do get a really good butterfly joint right in there, which despite the actual sculpting of the, uh, whatever this part is, like the armor going around on the top, um, it does not hinder anything at all. I really like that engineering that they put in there. It makes for a lot, it makes for a big amount of differences in posability. It makes this figure a lot more fun to move around. You do have, you have a little bit of articulation right over there for both sides, which I really do appreciate. The arms can go around a full 360. They can go out that much, which is a really, really good amount, which I really do like on this figure. You get a uh, upper arm swivel, I think it's the bicep swivel. You have the double jointed arms right there, and for the wrists, you do have your standard SH Figure Arts um, hinge joint. What the heck is this? Not is it not twisting around? Okay, so it does. It is a little bit more difficult to twist that around. I didn't even notice this. I messed around with this figure so much before. Reviewing it, this is my first time noticing it, and I guess it's just because of the fact that I didn't actually utilize that joint, since he is a very big figure. It's not something that I even noticed when actually posing around. And, and oh yeah, despite this figure being made in Vietnam, it's not difficult at all to interchange the hands, which I really do appreciate. Now, when it comes to the torso, um, you can move this, you can move the torso going this far forward and this far back, um, and that is just like a real. I really do again love the amount of articulation that they managed to integrate into this cooler figure. He can move around like that side to side. You can wobble all around. There is so much that you can, so much range that you can get on this figure. Honestly, there's a, this is a way bigger figure, way more salt work going on. And when you take a look at a Saiyan race on Earth Goku, the Saiyan race on Earth Goku doesn't have nearly as much waist swivel and maneuverability as this final form cooler, which that is honestly really shocking. But man, it just goes to show that they really did a great job on this figure. Now, the now, one thing that was pointed out to me by my, my friend Animated Heroes is that when you have this figure going, like, leaning far forward, they're specifically at this part of the joint, you can't actually manage to move the legs up at all. It actually locks the legs into the... Actually, not, not this one. I think it's just because of the fact that it's... Yeah, so depending on which way the, the thing is leaning, if you have it leaning, like, this way, right, you're not going to be able to move this leg, but you're going to be able to move this one. And it's because of the fact that there's a little bit of the plastic right underneath this midsection right over here that we can't see because of this... Overlaying, overlaying part in the crotch area that it, it's just stopping the articulation being able to move but it's it just something to be wary of because you do not, you guys do not want to be able to break this figure Make, you can move the legs this far forward this far back you do get a pretty good amount of splits really good for a gigantic figure like this um, you do get a thigh swivel right over there you have the double jointed knees and for the ankles 
you do have a really good ankle pivot, really, really good ankle pivot. I am just heavily impressed with the, when it comes to the figure. The, the, the legs, the feet, I'm sorry, the feet can go this far down and this far up. And that is it when it comes to the articulation. Oh, I completely forgot about the tail. Let me go ahead and get to that. The tail does come in the packaging as a separate piece, but obviously it's not, a, it's like, it's part of what cooler is. Um, so the actual tail can move all around right over there. There's a hinge joint. There's a swivel right there as well, which is really, really nice. Um, there's another swivel joint right over here. You can move around the exact same way, which lets him get his tail into so many different poses. Now, one thing that was actually on the Dragon Stars version, wait, I didn't even compare the Dragon Stars version of this. That's something I can guess, I guess I can do in a photo at the end of the review or something. But like, there's no actual articulation right over here at the tip of the tail, which I think could have been something easy for them to do, but it's not something that they went around doing this time, which I'm okay with. It's not like you're really going to be needing as much articulation there, since the tail is more so sculpted straight. It's not really on a curve, that much of a curvature to where I feel like the articulation is necessary. So overall, other than the slight issues that I am having with the quality control and the double ball peg, that's which is my really much just my main complaint. I think this is an absolute killer of a figure. This is one of the best figures that Tamashii Nations has ever made. And I'm not just saying this from the hype from being a Cooler fan. Like, everything about this figure, other than the, like, other than the slight, you know, letdown on the accessories, th this, this, they absolutely knocked it out of the ballpark when, the, when, it came, when it came down to this figure. And I really do love what Tamashii Nations did. They absolutely killed it. They know that... They can do a really good job when they know that they can do a good job. When they really try to do a good job. Not like what they did with the full Dookie Super Saiyan Goku or anything like that. This right here is what we call an SH Figure Arts. And this is what, you know, how our quality of their figures should be. And Viet despite the fact that this is made in Vietnam, just everything about uh, the engineering on this figure really does push above all else and makes this seriously one of the best figures in the entire line. Great job, Tamashii Nations. Now, if you guys do want to go ahead and pick this figure up, I don't exactly know where you can get it as of right now. You probably got to look around on eBay. And unfortunately, because it was a premium Bandai release, when you go in to buy this figure on eBay, it is going to be a little bit more expensive. But I would definitely suggest, regardless of that, get this figure while you still can, while it is still cheap. Because over time, the aftermarket is going to be making this guy a lot more expensive. So if you're going to be, a, if you want to get this cooler figure into the collection, now is the time to do so. Like, the sooner that you get it in, the better, because this guy is going to absolutely skyrocket, and it would be a shame if you were not able to get this figure into your collection. But anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys did enjoy this figure review, and I will see you guys in the comments section. Until then.